my beautiful soulmate i'm here again with another blockbuster or video on how to learn how to draft a corset with yoke this video is very detailed and it is beginners friendly if you are interested in this video if you love to learn how to draft a three-part corset with yoke then please stay tuned to my channel please subscribe like share to your loved ones and let's get started welcome once again to my channel you are highly welcome and appreciated for everything i hope you get value for what you learn here is my workspace and i've marked my starting line i will be marking my vertical lines which are the boss point the under boss point and the half length so one thing i want to say in this video is that before you can draft a corset you must know how to draft a basic body swell and you must know how to draft a boost well that way it will help you to understand how to draft a corset well but if you don't know that, I have a lot of videos on how to do all that. So now the next thing for me to mark, which this is very optional. If you are making a corset blouse, you can do that. From your half length, you come down by 5 inches. Or you should tell, ask your client where she wants the corset length to reach. Or your corset blouse should not be too long. Then afterwards, I will impute my shoulder measurement divided by 2. And from that point, I will come down by 1 inch as my shoulders look then i'll slant it straight like so then for the armhole area i'll divide my bust divided by 6 plus 1.5 inches then to get a perfect armhole length i'll mark the shoulder line and mark it like so then i will connect the lines this way to help me to get a perfect accurate armhole length then for the armhole curve i'll divide my bust divided by 4 and i'll connect it into the armhole length and from that point now we will divide the armhole length into two to get the middle point and at that middle point we are going to be coming in by half inch and using my curve ruler you will connect everything together to create the armhole curve for the front i have other ways in creating my armhole curve sometimes i make use of ruler then i'll make use of my curve ruler but i decided to use this method today once you know your basics you it will not be new then now the next thing for me to do is to impute my dart which is my ball span divided by two that is nipple to nipple measurement divided by two and i will mark half of it down the boss point the under boss point the waistline and the length as i have said earlier if you are attaching your corset to a skirt you don't need to mark it as full length but if you are doing it as a corset blouse you can follow this process so to know the dart we are going to be taking on the under bust area i will subtract my round under bust from my round bust my round bust is 34 inches while the round under bust is 30 inches i'll get four inches then that four inches i'll divide divide it by two so that two inches is what we're going to be using as our bustier dart intake so now i'll be sharing it equally that's one inch on the center front and one inch on the side front but there are some that intake that is three inches four inches upward make sure that that center front you do not use anything more than one inch one inch is okay then every other inches you put it on the side front so from the boss point i'll come down by half inch and using my curve ruler i'll connect it into the that intake so i said this a lot it's better you first use pencil to trace it out before you use marker in fact, normally, if not for the sake of video, we are not meant to be using marker because marker has some little inches to measurement. So here is it. I've connected it and tried to blend any sharp edge. As you can see, the next thing for us to do is to mark our overboss dart. And to do so, I'll divide my shoulder slope into two. Using my ruler, I'll connect it straight into the bust point. And now, to get that point where the neck yoke, to know how deep your neck yoke will be, you have to know how deep you want the neck yoke to be. This way, you know if you want it to reveal your body or not. Is either you measure the neckline on your client or you measure the distance between your bust point to your under bust. So, this is two ways you can get it. Is either you measure your, the neckline on the body of the client or you measure the distance between the bust point to the under bust. So, I've input what I wanted and I am marking it. I am making this corset for a teenager and I will not want it to reveal her body. So after that, for my dart intake, I'll be sharing 1.5 inches on both sides. That's the 0 0.75 to 0.75 on both sides. Then I'll try to use my curve ruler to rule to make a curve like so. Make sure your curve is well blended and okay. Then now I'll be highlighting this part because it is not going to be needed. 
Now the next thing I'll be doing is to divide my round bust into four and impute it. Then my round waist also I'll divide it and the dart intake we took I will return it to avoid shortage. My round hip on the full length area I'll divide it and I'll return the half length. So as I've said if what you just need for this corset is an half length you will stop at the waistline you don't need to measure your round hip or on the full length area this one is just for corset blouse it's still the same thing corset blouse or corset with half length afterwards i will be taking my boss dart so to get your boss dart it is your front half length minus your back half length so whatever it is there is what you use as your boss dart intake i have a video on how to properly take body measurements so to create the sweetheart neckline on the yoke area i'll be coming down from the center front by one inch and also on this armhole area i'll come down by one inch though this armhole is not really compulsory you can leave it straight or you can design it in any way of your choice once you practice well you understand it then using my curve ruler i'll connect it like so and i'll also connect it into the armhole area so our sweetheart neckline has been formed now let's draft our corset cup from that center i'll be coming in by 0.5 inch the highest you should mark is 0.75 Please do not do more than 0 0.5 or 0 0.75. Then I'll make a mark. Then bring in my curve ruler. Look at the way I'm shaping it. I will draw my first cup. So one of the corset cup is ready. So to get the second corset cup, I will have to close the bust that. So we have to close the bust that. And to do that, we have to open the waist that. So I'm trying to use my I'll cut with my scissors to open the waist that. Then now I'll close the bust that like so. So if you've been watching my videos on how to draft a basic body, you understand what I am doing here. And I'll blend that lines. So after I've blended the lines well, from that side where we measured our boss divide by 4, I will come in by 1.5 inch. This is a very, very standard measurement. Whether you are chubby or you are slim, you come in from that point by 1.5 inch. Then using my curve ruler, I will arrange it well. And make sure that your curve ruler, the cup, the curvy part it is showing very well because it will make your breast to sit well on the cup. So it is not like maybe you make your curve ruler look flat. So let that curvy part show very well. So after that, I can open it back because we are not totally true yet. So I'll open my boss that back. Now we are going to be snatching the waist. As you all know that the beauty of corset is to snatch the waist. So whatever the amount of inches you want to subtract from your waist, you will like now maybe you want to snatch your waist by four inches you will subtract it from your original waist measurement for example now the waist i'm working with is 30 inches so if i'm snatching with four inches that is 30 divided by four will give me 26 though i have plans to snatch with just two inches so 30 minus two will give me 28 you are now going to divide the waist into four so the waist divided by four whatever it gives you you will now remeasure it so now we are going to have a new waist measurement so now I'm trying to impute it back and also consider that that. So I got 7 inches. So I'm trying to re-impute it back. So this way we've snatched the waist with 2 inches. Some people snatch with 6 inches, some people 10 inches as the case may be. But I don't really believe in snatching my waist too much. I just believe that the corset should give me shape on the waist area. I should not unnecessarily snatch my waist or intestine, something like that. So now I'm trying to reconnect the lines with my marker. you notice that now I'm trying to remark a new line. So whatever you want to snatch your waist with, I am not disputing or discouraging anyone. You subtract it from your real waist and you follow what I did. So now you can leave your cup like this. This is called like a two-piece cup. And we have the three parts, the three parts one. So it's the three parts cup I want to teach since we've done the two parts. So to do that, you will close your overboard that like so. And sometimes the lines shift. When it shifts like that, you bring in your curved ruler to blend it well. You have to blend the lines well. It matters. So after blending, on that part, you can come down by 1.5, 1 inch, 2 inches. And this part, you can, maybe if you come down by 1.5 on that side, you come in by 1 inch on this side. What just matters is you being creative. There's no rule that say one side should be two inches and the other should be one inch. This side can be two inches, while the other side should be 1.5 inch. You understand? So you just be, you can play around it. I think I use two inches for one side and 1.5 for the other side. 
there's a way to give the cup a fine styling and it can even be two inches by two inches too you can also make use of three inches for people with very big busts then now you use your cover to connect and you blend every necessary point so after you've blended the lines you have to label your cups so that you will not mix them together they can be confusing at times so i label them one a one b two three so i can know that one a will make me know that is at the center front and one b we're still going to be adding more labels to it after we've cut it now we are going to be styling the neckline and for my neck width i made use of four inches for the neck depth i made use of four inches also you can make yours five inches as the case may be so this is like a basic round neckline and also you can make it a deep v neckline as in the width will be four inches and you just really straight into your yoke area where the corset starts from you can also make use of your curve ruler one thing about these things you knowing the basics after you know the basics you can play around it then i'll label it my yoke though i have plans to make use of the basic round neckline so this part is totally optional i decide you don't want your blouse to be too straight so i came up by 1.5 inches and blended it with my curve ruler so that the the blouse will be stylish at the side so now we are going to be cutting but before we cut it i have to blend my i have to close my boss that and also i have to label the center front the side front and everything we are still going to be doing more of the labelings after i finish cutting so please watch through the way i'm cutting so you can know how to cut as i've said earlier one thing about it's not hard to get a corset what just matters is you know your basic pattern drafting how to draft a boosty then corsets will follow after i've separated the yoke i am going to close the cup like so and i will sellotape it together as in that's one a and one b because we are going to be cutting it as one you know there's an a dart there an unwanted dart there so now i will cut out my other cups like this so that we can separate the center front from the side front then now i also cut this upper part of the yoke the number one part and then i will open the dart and cut out the little dart that remain please do not forget as small as that dart it, it can spoil the fitting of your clothes so now i'm going to be labeling the boss points i'll create this arrow so that we can know the point the the cup meets then i also label it the center and the side so you won't get confused so here is our front pattern let us move to the back pattern so here is my pattern paper for the back pattern and I've ruled out the starting line. So the first thing I'm going to be marking is my half length on the back pattern. Remember I said your front pattern half length is different from the back pattern. I, I will surely drop the link on how to take proper measurements. Then after that, whatever the inches you came down from your waistline for the blouse, you also do the same thing at the front, at the back. This part is really optional now, it is not compulsory. After that, I am going to input my shoulder measurement divided by 2. From the point, I'll come down by 1 inch to get my shoulder slope and I'll connect it into the starting line. And for the ammo length, whatever the ammo length you use on your front, use it at the back and you will connect it. Please take note of all these vital points. Then after that, I'll make a, a straight line. And after that, I'll divide my bust into 4 and connect it into the, my, my ammo length. Using my curve ruler, I'll create the ammo like so. So at that point that we created our ammo length, where it stops, I will measure everything from the starting line to that point and I will impute it because automatically that point is our chest line. We are going to be in need of the chest line at the back and I'll also label it. So to get our dart intake, you divide your ball span, that's your nipple to nipple measurement, into two and impute it and I will rule a straight line like so. And for the dart intake, I'll be making use of a dart of 1 inch. I'll share it into to that is 0.5 inches on both sides. I'll connect it straight into the chest line. So if you have plans to make a blouse, you connect it into your full length. But if you don't have plans to make a blouse, it is okay at your waistline. Remember, you are still adding something at the lower part. So now I'll divide my bust by 4 and impute, my waist by 4 and impute. And I'll also return the dart intake same thing you do at the uh, um, the full length area you divide your hip by four and impute so to get the yoke of the back you have to bring your front yoke and mark that point where it stops at the arm o so your yoke will rhyme and it will look neat and unique then afterwards i'll impute my neck width i made it of four inches for the front and i'll impute it then the neck depth of one inch then i'll create a curve like so 
so this part you can make your yolk like this it is fine you can also use your curve ruler to create a v-neck line yolk at the back into the chest line it is also nice you can also use your straight ruler like this also it is part of it so any yolk you love to make you can make it and also some people do not even snatch their corset back they can make use of zipper but if you do that you have to take away your zipper contour and also you can create this kind of yoke for this type you come in at the ammo area by 1 or 1.5 inches and on that neckline you come down by 2 inches so i chose to erase them so that the lines will not be too much and also you can measure the distance between that neckline to the chest line and divide it into two then you try to sketch like use your free hand to create a round neckline like this to create this trendy yoke neckline also that one too works but i have another kind of yoke in mind to create so i decided to erase all the necklines i've measured since so at my real chest line from this upper yoke chest line i will just create a curve using my curve ruler and i will sketch it with my pencil like so so to create the corset back design i'll come down by one inch on the lower part and 1.5 inch on this higher part so that we have where our corset lacing will pass through using my ruler i'll connect it and i'll also create this dot so i can know that that point is the center back then i also highlight the neckline like so and afterwards because i wanted a v neckline at the back using my straight ruler i'll connect it into the neck width i have marked earlier and i'll label the yoke so the waistline we used for the front after we've snatched it i also input it at the back but remember it's from our starting line you'll be imputing it not from the um, the corset back then also i'll take the dart intake and i'll connect everything like so so if you have any question do not hesitate to ask me in the comment section i will surely answer you then after that for those who are planning to make a corset blouse you bring your front side front and you mark where the side ended so that you can create that curvy effect at the down part and you rule it into the blouse like so so now it is ready and all we need to do now is to cut through the lines so you take your time to label the center back and the side back and also take note of the important points so that you will not mix them up so after that i will cut out the yoke and here is what it looks like i will also cut out my darts and this is how what it looks like i hope you learned something new in this video if you have questions please don't hesitate to ask so you can see that the side front and the side back have aligned up and we added the balls that are the front so here is everything i've also transferred them to the fabric watch out for the sewing video i will be giving you more details on how i transferred it on the fabric and here is everything i hope you learned something new thank you so much for watching my video see you in my next one if you have questions please ask and please do not forget to like comment share and watch out for the sewing video see you in my next one until then keep winning bye